You may not be aware that Gentidno in Sir Conwy, to use the Welsh, is very steeped in Jewish history and there's a lot of Jewish connections here. And they really helped build Gentidno as it was blossoming as a tourist destination. I hesitated to make this video due to my own connections with Judaism and my being a non-Jew who's moved toward Judaism. There's a dog. <laughs> and so in this video I'm going to walk around Kentidno and show you some of the historical sites connected to Jewish people here. I would like to take this opportunity before we begin to thank a couple people. Dr. Nathan Abrams, who's done a lot of work on Jewish heritage in Gogleth Cymru, North Wales. And also the Jewish Heritage Center, I think it is. I'll put a link down below and I'll put the name here to give proper credit for that. Without that group and him, I don't think, well, I wouldn't have been able to make this video. And I just want to give credit for the photos as well. So just a bit of understanding where we are in context. Ken Didno became a tourist resort after land clearances in the mid 19th century. And they built this wonderful vista here around the bay and trains came here and it was a Victorian resort, basically a Gogarth, the giant rock. Some Victorians decided we're going to do everything we can do on this giant rock. My time in Kendidno is coming to an end, but I think subconsciously part of why I moved here during the pandemic was I am on a spectrum moving closer towards Judaism in my own personal life. If you want a video on that, let me down in the comments. But this video is about the Jewish people who were already Jewish when they came here and their story and their history. And this is about them, not me. So let's go for a walk around Chendidno and I'll show you some of the Jewish places connected to those people. Let's start this journey by going down the prom. Over the years, there have been several, quite a few kosher guestai, that's Welsh for a hotel or accommodation. And in the 19th century, as anti-Semitism grew in Europe, a lot of Jews went to places like Manchester and Liverpool. And on holiday, they would come here to the new, it was quite new in the period, Kendidno Tourist Resort. And they set up guestai or accommodation. The first of those was in 1872 by a man named Joseph Aaron. And it would have been along here somewhere, I'm not sure where to Neville Crescent is exactly. But it was the first of quite a few, like Bodlondeb and Plas Gogarth. This became a fusion of cultures here, with the Jewish people contributing quite a bit to the emergence of this place as a destination for holiday makers from Liverpool and Manchester. Although the number of kosher accommodations dipped a bit around the turn of the 20th century during the Second World War for, I suppose, obvious reasons, they increased as more Jewish people came to Kendidno. Let's talk about some of the people. Morris Wardski was born in Turek in Poland today in 1855 and he had to escape from the pogroms, the anti-Semitic pogroms before moving and resettling in Bangor down the road. He opened up a jewelry shop first there in 1895. Whilst there, his son Charles was seriously injured riding a bike. Wartke moved his family to Kendidno about 1908, hoping that living near the sea would help Charles. Wartsky opened a shop at 33 Street, Moston. And quite soon it multiplied into three shops. With others at 31 and 93 Street, Moston. Suitably, the jewelry shop Goldsmith is the shop at number 93 today. And you can see this mosaic here, Wartsky. At the threshold of the door, walking in. A 
another prominent Jew in Kedidno was Emmanuel Snowman. He was born in London in 1886. He became a remarkably successful businessman and he was also mayor for Hampstead. And although he was only 20, he started a relationship with Harriet, the daughter of Morris Vatsky, we just spoke about. The couple married in the Kendidno Synagogue on the 19th of October 1909. Reports were published about the marriage in the national press, as well as local papers, and a quite substantial number of Jews came here from across Britain by invitation only, and a feast for 400 people. Not bad. So much was the call for others to see the marriage. About a thousand people stood outside the synagogue to line the streets. Afterwards, the couple moved to London and opened up a branch of Ortsky's on Regent Street. Later, he developed business in York, where some of the wealthy and famous of the day, like Jack Yonassis, Cary Grant, and Bing Crosby shot. Let's talk about Yusuf Dubai and his family. He was an Iraqi-born Jew, and he arrived with his family around 1918, and he took over the Oriental Store at Nine Street, Boston. The tiles on the floor still say Oriental Stores, as well as you can see advertisements above the entrance. Lingerie, leather goods. Joseph's son Jack took over the business and was famous for being the only shop open on Christmas Day. Jack had a brother called Robin who was quite a character in the Adam Robin's Cafe at 6 Street Mostyn for many years where the arcade is now, just over the street. He would stand outside the cafe lunch hour shouting out the menu to be women. Today, the name H. Bladman and Son is said to be one of the leading auctioneers of fine arts and furniture in the world. But few know that the company had its origins in Kendidno in 1884, where cafe culture is today at the corner of Street Mostyn and St. George's Place. Harry Bladman arrived in Britain from Poland in the 1870s and set up his business in Kendidno soon after. To take advantage of the tourist industry during the summer months, Blair had auctions in a building at the end of the pier. By the end of the Great War, his son Philip Blairman had opened branches around Britain. Today, the business is located at Queen's Anne's Gate, London. And then there's the Lazar family. One of the coastal accommodations most obvious in Kendidno by the 1920s was Tigva. Hebrew for Gobaith, or in English, Hope. Gobaith is Welsh, of course. The Lazar family is most well known for the department store the family ran for many years on Street Mostyn, and later 628 Street Madog. Recently, the outlet store that supplied all the latest London fashions during the 1950s and 60s. It obviously had had a heyday. The Krupp family was another Jewish family, and Solomon Krupp, born in Russia in 1882, escaped from troubles there, arrived in Kendidno by 1902. Together with Morris Vartsky, Krupp was pioneering in establishing the synagogue in Kendidno in 1909, which we'll get to in a moment. In 1922, Solomon decided to change the name of his surname to Krupp to avoid anti-German feelings of the period. After the death of his wife, his first wife, by serious illness, he remarried several years later and established a famous local business of the name Progressive Furniture Business. 
in Kraigedom, quite a bit down from the main prom. Let's go back up to Street Morston. Jews in the Zero, you would need a synagogue and I've had brief mention of that before here but let's go into a bit further detail about that. Klendidna Jury's first synagogue was established by Moritz Vartsky and others in the Masonic Hall on Stridi Chaf in 1909 where Emanuel Snowman married. During the Second World War, the congregation increased quite a bit with Jews who were escaping the bombing in large cities, moving to the town. After the war, it became clear that a new synagogue was needed. When the Second World War broke out, there was a large increase in the Jewish population of Kendidna. As a result, a second synagogue temporarily was opened in the Wesleyan Ebenezer Chapel, a Christian center today, on Study Lloyd. In the period, kosher accommodation adverts boasted they were within easy reach of air raid shelters. This was, however, a temporary agreement and they needed to expand, as after the war it became clear a new synagogue was required. There are other histories but you need to come to Kendidno and perhaps take the Jewish history walking tour for that and I'll put links down below what I can find for you. This is the synagogue today which serves mainly as a retreat you can see behind me. It was a military hospital during the war and they transferred it into being a synagogue. After the Second World War the community here was quite substantial and there needed to be something more substantial so this house behind me Red Court became the new synagogue in 1948. Now the community has declined in number over the years but people still do come here and enjoy it throughout the year and it's important that they have some kind of accommodation which can provide kosher necessities of course. And it's mainly for the Ashkenazi community, so I'm not going to go up and knock on the door, be a bit impolite, I think. For me, just beginning my own Jewish journey, have not in any sense converted, not knowing exactly where I'm going to go on that spectrum yet. But I just wanted you to see it and know that it's active today. You have visitors throughout the year, mainly in the summer, which come here from a Jewish background and providing needs for their faith, which is important, I think, in our area of Conway, in Cymru, Wales, so that people can have that and experience that in Kendidna and be in touch with the history that is active still today here. As for my own temperaments of faith, Judaism, I don't think this is the place for me to begin Judaism properly. So I'm going to definitely leave them in peace and not disturb them. But here, have a look at this retreat center, Chabad Lubavitch.
I hope you enjoyed seeing a bit of Hendidno's Jewish history and a bit of, well, how beautiful this place is. If you want to find out more about the local area, I'll give you some links down below. Amgiedva Museum, they've had some interesting exhibits on regarding the subject, and I'll include them down below. As always, Dilch Barrial and Willio, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode.